it's been ages since I've seen you on a Thursday. It's lovely to see you again. It's not that you haven't been here, it's me that hasn't been here on a Thursday, I think, since before Christmas. So, um, Happy New Year to you all, because <laughs> I haven't said that yet to, uh, to many of you. Thank you. The thoughts I'm going to share with you this morning are things that have been brewing in me since um, just before Christmas. And um, I have to let you into a little bit of a secret, really. Or maybe it's a <laughs> confession. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> and the confession is that um, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to me. You can listen um, and um, kind of come along with me if you want to. But really, this is... Um, these are, this is what's going on in me, and, um, and I hope it makes some sense to you and uh, has maybe a bit of a challenge in there for you. And the thoughts that have been going round in my head, um, clarified since Christmas, but probably begun in Nazareth, are the thoughts about being pilgrims or tourists. Now, if you um, are looking at Crowhurst CCHC's Facebook, you might have seen our New Year message from the chaplains. And I spoke about pilgrims and tourists for just a couple of moments as part of that New Year message. But this is really digging a little bit deeper. You see, when we went to Nazareth, and it happens when you go to other places as well, well, it happens when I go to other places as well. There's a tension that rises within me. And the, the tension is, do I cram in as much as I can because I'm only there for that much time and I want to see as much as possible, do as much as possible, and use every minute of the day that there is possibly to use. And there's nothing wrong with that, I have to say. And I've been there, done it, got hundreds of photographs to prove that I've been there, done that, and rushed around, yeah, and got the T-shirt. But, you know, when you go to a place like the Holy Land and other places, that kind of approach can feel a little bit shallow. And it's the balance of wanting to see so much and, in a sense, ticking things off the list of things you want to see and spending just one or two, or choosing just one or two places where you want to spend some really meaningful and significant time to really experience it. Now... The first time you go anywhere, particularly somewhere like the Holy Land, it's helpful to do it the tourist way. It really is, because you don't know what there is to see, you don't know much about it perhaps, you don't know the transport networks, you don't know how to get around, you don't know the culture, and doing it you know, by booking onto a, a tourist way of doing it is very helpful. You get the sense of the place, you get to see loads of places, you get snapshots of history and culture and when you go back you want to do it differently but it wouldn't work to be the tourist every time well at least for me it wouldn't work to be the tourist every time it's a busy way of doing it too busy in some ways there's a sense of haste you're always kind of looking at your watch. What time have we got to be back to the coach? What time have we got to be at our next place? What time? What time? And that's how it feels like all the way through. And you come back with your head crammed with what you've seen, where you've been, what you've heard, trying to hang on to all the facts and the information, but not necessarily greatly changed by the experience. Not necessarily greatly changed and you see being a pilgrim is different so I want to read a few verses from Psalm 84 
the first few verses of Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty! My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. O Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, who have set their hearts on pilgrimage, who've set their hearts on pilgrimage. So what does it mean then to be a pilgrim? And you might be sitting there thinking, it's all very well for you, I can't travel, I can't go anywhere because of a multiple of reasons and responsibilities. I can't travel, therefore I can't be a pilgrim. And I'm going to read you a little, just a sentence from this book called um, The Accidental Pilgrim by a lady called Maggie Dawn. And I'm going to read a couple of quotes from her, one now and one in a little bit. She says, Being a pilgrim isn't necessarily about being active. The opposite of being passive isn't moving about, but paying attention. Whenever there is an opportunity to see the world through someone else's eyes and for the unfamiliar to cast its light on us, we have the choice to insulate ourselves against discomfort or to pay attention and open ourselves up to what is new. This lady wanted to walk the Camino and she wasn't able to do it because she was in a wheelchair. So she decided to read other people's accounts of walking the Camino, very different accounts. And she undertook pilgrimage through their eyes. However, it's not really the kind of pilgrimage I'm talking about not the one that requires that kind of travel. I read a quote online that said, one's destination is never a place, but a new way of seeing things. It's about seeing and experiencing the moment. So we're changed by it, or we allow ourselves to be changed by it, and the possibility of coming closer to the heart of God. And as I read Psalm 84, could you feel the yearning in it, mm. the longing in it, the longing to be closer to God? Yes, this is a psalm about a pilgrimage towards the temple. It has a destination. And the person who's writing is even so yearning to be close to the, the courts of the Lord where actually he's almost jealous of the sparrow that's got a nest near the altar. That's how much the psalmist wants to be in the presence of the Lord. If I was to score my level of that kind of yearning to be in the courts of the Lord... I'd have to think about what that score might be. How high is my yearning? How high is yours at the beginning of this year? The psalmist says, Blessed are those whose strength is in you, God, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. And if we're going to have our hearts set on pilgrimage, our strength needs to be set in the right place.
The psalmist's strength is in God, in the Lord. Where do you find your strength? Sometimes we look for our strength in our finances, don't we? In our money, in our work, in our physical strength, maybe prestige, maybe who we are, what we've done. They can be good and helpful and they can make our lives comfortable, no doubt. But none of that guarantees safe passage through the storms of life, does it? (laughs) Or indeed, make sense of the passage through the storms of life. All the money in the world doesn't make sense of grief, does it? All the money in the world doesn't make sense of pain or loss or illness or photos. Because the truth is, each one of us is on a pilgrimage. Each one of us, not just me. You are as well. If you can but see it that way. We begin our pilgrimage when we are born. And our pilgrimages take detours through the storms of life at times, don't they? Our pilgrimages take detours through illness and sufferings and griefs and the things that happen that we just don't understand. And yes, through joy and contentment and when life is going well. If our hearts are set on pilgrimage to dwell in the courts of the Lord, whatever is going on in our lives, then I think to be a pilgrim helps us to make sense of those experiences. Tourists would just rush on through it and hardly take notice of what's going on. On to the next thing. Pilgrims, though, Pilgrims can find meaning in whatever circumstance of life we are in. Opportunities to learn more about ourselves, about how we respond to things, more about God. Recognizing how I am am now different because I have lived through that. How it might help me as I travel on in my pilgrimage, the experience gained and the insight seen. To not take notice of the experience is the tourist trail. Because pilgrimage can turn every situation into an opportunity to encounter God if we choose to see it that way. And it is an attitude of heart and mind to live life in this way. And I'm just beginning to see it, so I'm very early days. I'm going to finish with another quote from Maggie. Maggie Dawn, who says, very profoundly, it's not where you go but who you become that makes you a pilgrim. For anyone up for pilgrimage this year?